You are listening to Gay SA Radio, where you are family, and I'm talking to Christopher Olbarger, and you won Mr. Gay World in 2013. What makes all of this quite special for me is the fact that you grew up in South Africa. What was it like for you? I sure did, yes. That was a while ago, but, well, that was an amazing thing, I guess. South Africa is an amazing country. There is no other place in the world quite like it, and having traveled the world, it, you begin to realize how special it really is. But for me personally, my, my personal experience of South Africa was very different. I mean, when you got away from people, the countryside, the land itself is so beautiful, but it's still, there are pockets of just really bad um, conservatism that still existed, and unfortunately, I grew up in one of those little pockets, and so, yeah, it was a difficult experience for me. But but when we moved to New Zealand, um, my family immigrated here in 2002. Yeah, that all changed and I changed and things became better. But yeah, South Africa still has very much a special place in my heart. And then in 2013, you won Mr. Gay Award. And it, it was the second time that somebody from New Zealand won this competition. What was the experience like for you? Well, it was crazy. I was the second person to win it from New Zealand in a row. It was... Um, yeah, quite the experience. After winning Mr. Gay and Zed, which was kind of sort of like an almost accident in a way, because Andreas, who was Mr. Gay World 2012, um, and also Mr. Gay and Zed 2012, had asked me to enter the competition because he didn't have enough entrants to make it a, a good competition, really. And so he asked me as a, as, a, as a favor and as a friend if I wouldn't mind, you know, stepping up to the plate. I did, and then I ended up winning the competition, which was great. I thought, like, well, that's really cool. Got a little title for a year, and then the international invite came, and I went to um, Belgium, um, Antwerp, and competed there. And yeah, um, I I went over with the with the idea in my head that they probably wouldn't allow the same country to win back to back years, so I hadn't or I didn't have a chance to win. So I kind of went over just to make, make friends, learn about my situation, gather as much information as I could about the world situation, politics, etc., and just went to really have a good time and do myself and my country proud. And then <laughs> ended up winning that as well. So it was quite the experience. How did that impact on your life? Well, first of all, it, it, it made everything <laughs> so much crazier than I had ever expected. Having not intended to win, I hadn't really formulated an idea of what I would have done if I had. Um, and so I very quickly had to put my head down and kind of come up with a focus and a message and something that I wanted to sort of soldier on for as a Mr. Gay World representative. But then also what I kind of had to like figure out what my life was going to do around that same year. Um, and it was, it was a very tricky situation, but inevitably it was, it was an incredible experience. On your private life? Well, I was quite lucky in my private life at the time. I just recently before even entering Mr. Gay and Zed had parted ways with a partner of some many years and was living the single, almost celibate life at the time. And yeah, I was trying to devote some time on rediscovering who I was and how I fitted into the scene and what I had to offer. So I was kind of, this all just happened at the same time. So my personal life didn't take a real hit because I wasn't really with anyone or looking for anyone at the time. So it really opened me up to the idea of being able to go overseas and abroad and not really have to take too many other things into consideration like that. Did the title help you address issues and causes you are interested or were interested at all? Yeah, it did. It really did. It gave me the best platform. Since I am a, a suicide survivor and a child obesity survivor and, you know, I, I, I've had a very dark dark adolescence and came out the other end of that, you know, this strong, empowered, self-realized gay man. And my focus was to perpetuate the idea that there is help out there for for people who are lost fledglings, you know, just trying to find a way and trying to find people to reach out to. And so my cause was um, youth empowerment and, and suicide and prevention, because that was something that was very close to my heart. And whilst I was traveling the world, I had many opportunities to speak on the subject and to, um, at the Commonwealth Games in Glasgow in 2014, I was able to sort of sit at a symposium and talk to youth about my experiences growing up and, and how different nowadays has become because, you know, information and help is so readily available, whereas in my day, it just really wasn't. Yeah, it was an incredible, incredible, incredible experience. 
If you have the opportunity to compete in Mr. Gay, Mr. Gay World again, would you do it? Absolutely, without a doubt. <laughs> it was one of the best experiences I've ever had. I mean, not only do you, um, I mean, get to meet all these other amazing men who stand for so many amazing things, but you begin to realize that there is a as a community and and a family beyond just the competition. And it was just traveling the world that I realized how big the scope of this could be. And just how important it is to have a Mr. Gay world as well, because, you know, it brings us to the forefront and it allows us to have a voice in, in many situations where otherwise, you know, silence would have been the other option. That's never the best option. Since winning um, Mr. Gay World and uh, since handing over the title, what have you been up to? What's been happening? What's been happening? Well, the whole Mr. Gay World experience was so incredible that it really kind of put me on the back foot when I had to like step down because it had taken over my life to the extent that I had um, moved to Europe for a few months and made base in, in Rome and was flying around all over the place that it really opened my eyes to how big and amazing the world really is and how small I had been thinking up to that point. So coming back home, it just made me think a little bit harder about what it was I wanted to achieve in life. And ever since I've been working really, really hard at that. So I've always said my personal motto in life is that I want to bring joy to the world, bring happiness, bring a sense of connectedness to human beings. I did that as my as as the Mr. Gay World then, and I've done that as a campaigner for many a cause here in New Zealand. And now I'm doing that again internationally as a as a burlesque performer. Tell me about that. I love performing. I'm a trained contemporary and ballet dancer, and I have now found this avenue, this niche that before just um, had sort of been hidden from me. And it's art of burlesque, a fancy form of stripping with lots of rhinestones and costumes and personas. And yeah, I have found that I am able to create performances that kind of bring people into my world a bit, and I am able to make them feel things and experience things that I could do if I were just talking to them. And through performance, I've then created this platform where people can come through a similar sort of realizational journey. And I feel it's so empowering for me, but also so I'm giving to other people. And I don't know, I guess it's a gift. It's a gift that I get from performing when I do it for others. Any cam performances available? Can we see any videos anywhere? Um, there are some videos available on my uh, YouTube channel, I guess. Um, you just have to type in Chris Allwage, and I think one of the first things that comes up is my New Zealand Got Talent entry. And then if you just keep following Chris Allwage, um, it will take you through to my page, which will have some recent um, burlesque and commercial dance gigs that I've done. So, yeah, it is possible to buy me. <laughs> Fans can go and look. You don't have to be in New Zealand to see you. No, no, no. And then if you're lucky enough, you know, I might just be traveling to your, your region at some point and performing there live. So keep, keep an eye out. Lastly, advice for any contestants. I would say, first and foremost, know what you stand for and make sure that it is something that you hold close to your heart because we can see through people. You know, and we want to know that somebody who really, really has a cause to heart will really do a good job at that. Be clear with your thinking, be clear with your motives, and have fun. Enjoy it. Enjoy meeting other people from other worlds. Take the time to learn about someone else's country and just really be open to the experience because it really is. It is one of the best and most amazing things that can happen to you. You just have to go out there with a smile and a can-do attitude. Great stuff. Chris, thank you so, so much for your time. It was amazing to chat to you. My absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for contacting.